All right, ladies, welcome, welcome, an official welcome to day three of the Menopause Reimagined Workshop. This is a very important day. I'm really excited. Get settled. Have your notepad and pe pen ready. Have your hydration ready. And we have the team on. I have Catherine. I have the amazing coach, Wendy, who some of you have spoken to. She's absolutely incredible. And she's going to be interacting with you in the chat. She's going to be fielding questions. If you have questions as I go, which you're very likely to, because I go very quickly through these materials. This is all about nutrition. This is my jam. I go quickly through it. So if you have questions, we're going to save some time at the end for me to take your questions live. All right. If you're listening to the, the replay or the recording, that's great. You're going to get just as much out of listening to everybody's questions. All right. So without further ado, um, I'm going to jump in. And this is day two, by the way, and we have day, we have one more day tomorrow, which is equally important. Today's nutrition and tomorrow are the other pillars of lifestyle that puts this whole thing together. And you need to do them all. You need all the pieces of the puzzle. If one piece of the puzzle is missing, then it, then you could well be, well, I don't know why I'm not getting results or I'm not moving forward. It's because that important piece of the puzzle was missing. So what I do is I put all the pieces, the necessary pieces of the puzzle together. All right, so let me get in. I'm gonna just share my slides with you, my trusty slides. Hopefully you can see it. Let's do that. Okay, have we got thumbs up? Fantastic, ladies. Menopause reimagined. And if you just jumped on a little bit late, if you didn't do day one session, you can always go back and watch the replay, but it's the bigger picture of really looking at the outcome that you want, imagining it. You have to, I cannot stress this enough, you have to have your focus on the exact outcome you want. It's like if you're going to climb Mount Everest or if a performer, a gymnast, Olympic gymnast, Simone Biles, wants to crush and get the gold medal, you, you've got to believe that she's visualized herself standing on that podium with the gold medal over and over and over. Then she's visualized every single step over and over and over and over that it takes to get there. It is no different with wellness and your health. This is where most women make a mistake. They try some difficult diet or program. They get caught in the weeds of it. It doesn't work. They feel discouraged because they haven't done these important steps that I go through. So you've got to imagine yourself where you want to be, the outcome you want on top of the mountain, and then allow me to be your Sherpa to show you the best and most effective way to get up to the top of that mountain. That is what I do. So what we're covering today is why most healthy uh, diets or trying that one thing fails over time. We went over that yesterday. Oh, but I've tried intermittent fasting or I've tried protein shakes or I've tried uh, you know, a, a cleanse or whatever. Yeah, okay, well, you tried that one thing. It might have been a useful part of a whole holistic protocol, but it didn't move the needle because you need a whole holistic lifestyle. And again, why most healthy diets, uh, are not well, even healthy diets, frankly, fail. Any diet fails. And I'll just tell you now, just to, you know, spoiler alert, is that they're too difficult and it's not sustainable. If you're doing something that's not sustainable, that you've got to measure food, you know, count calories every single single day doing something that is not going to be part and parcel of your lifestyle from this moment on, then it is not going to work. And that is why my methodology is very different. We need to understand the science, why it's critical to have clinical proof, the skinny on belly fat and how to banish it for good, gut health and how it changes in menopause, best food swaps, how to you, you, uh, read a nutrition label and your menopause nutritional blueprint for life. Are you excited? Let Coach Wendy and I and Catherine know, my team know in the chat. Don't please don't raise your hand right now. Please don't ask any questions because I need to get through this and get all the information down for you. If you have questions, write them down and I promise you I'll address them all at the end. So for those of you who weren't on the presentation yesterday, uh, day one, very quickly, I'm Sophie Giuliano, hello. I got a British accent. I live in Los Angeles. Some of you have very kindly put in the chat where you live. I love to know I have women, work with women all over the world. 
Um, I'm CEO of Ignite Your Life. Ignite is a very unique methodology where I help women uh, by way of a healthy, holistic lifestyle to dial in results that are even uh, even more impressive than being on some kind of extreme diet. Um, I'm a New York Times bestselling author, board certified nutritionist, certified weight management uh, specialist, and certified mindset coach. I bring the two disciplines together, if you like, of being a board certified nutritionist and mindset coach. And I bring these two things together because they have to go together. That is the only way that you are going to get results. We talked quite a lot about mindset yesterday, but if the mindset isn't dialed in, everything downstream of that is going to be affected and eventually fall apart. So learning to have a bulletproof mindset is a very, very big part of my methodology. I specialize in helping women over 45 to do all of these things. And all of these things are interrelated. Belly fat, inflammation, insulin sensitivity, gaining muscle mass, lesser menopausal symptoms, and basically to fall back in love with their bodies and with life. Because that's what it's all about. So that they can serve at a higher level. Because I think that's all what we all want to do, isn't it? As women who have big hearts and we've gone through a lot in our life and it's just like, I just want to be that. I want to serve. I want to be, feel like I have, you know, a, a purpose in my life. And so that is about, in order to do that, you've got to be in good health. So the solution, as I said yesterday, is simple and it can be simple, um, but it's not necessarily easy. And if anybody says, oh, it's it's so easy. It's that they're just not telling you the truth. Like anything that is new that you're going to learn, it's not about willpower. Write this down, ladies. It is not about willpower. You've tried willpower in the past. It didn't work, right? Let me know. Did willpower work? It is about skill power. There's a big, big difference. Will we? You need skill power. So you need to learn the skills, the mindset skills, and the physical skills. Um, so that it can become easy for you over time. But don't confuse the two. Remember the five root cause symptoms, inflammation, low energy, weight gain around your midsection, high um, LDL, that's the bad cholesterol, and insulin insensitivity. These are five root cause symptoms that you need to be paying attention to. Do not brush any of these symptoms off going, oh, well, it's just a little bit or a, oh, a tiny bit of this, that, you know, whatever, my, it's a little bit elevated. No, these are root cause symptoms that lead to other symptoms that can eventually lead to an outcome that you do not want because you do not want to be spending the next 20 years of your life in and out of a doctor's office, hospital and on medications. So optimal biomarkers, let's talk, take a look at this. I recommend that you take a screenshot of this, we can also post this slide in the Facebook group. Um, so these are your optimum markers. Now, I say optimum because when you go and get your labs back from the doctor, very often it's like, oh, you're in range, right? And depending on the lab, the ranges are different. But please remember that the ranges are taken of an average of the population right now. And when it is normal and average to die um, early of a heart attack, you know, or get cancer or very normal to be pre-diabetic, uh, pre we don't want normal range, we want optimal. And that is what my clients do, they get to optimal range. So these are the optimal numbers that you want, and we will post this in the Facebook group. It's very, very important that you understand that. There is one marker here. It is a blood a risk of cardiovascular disease marker called APOB. And that is actually, write that down because that is one test that you actually want to ask for. It's one that doctors don't often recommend, but it's much more accurate than any kind of lipid or cholesterol test in determining your risk for heart disease. All these numbers can be significantly improved especially after the age of 50, by adopting a primarily whole food plant-based uh, dietary pattern and holistic lifestyle. But it's got to be done right and it's got to be done correctly. Now, it has to be clinically proven, right? We need clinical results. There are two, there's so much misinformation and disinformation on the internet right now that's just leading you to absolute confusion. This is what I hear over and over again, but this one says this, and this person says this, and this, da, 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 da. So we ha it has to be clinically proven. Don't take my word for it. 
So what you need to do is you need to learn how to understand the science, okay? Now, I'm not gonna turn this into a science class, so you can breathe a sigh of relief, but it's super important for you as a smart, wise woman to understand at least the basics of how to read science, because otherwise you can get very confused with what people are saying out there, the stories they are telling, and there's a lot of stories out there. So there's a hierarchy of science. First or lowest um, in terms of rigorous science is anecdotal. And that is what you're gonna hear on social media and friends, which is either, oh, I've heard, or I did this diet. A lot of I've heard, right, is what we see vi going viral on TikTok and Instagram. Oh, I took this one thing or ate this one food and look, no more belly fat, or I did this cleanse, or I did this supplement, right? It's a story, there is no clinical evidence behind it. Then we've got observational and epidemiological. We talked about the blue zones yesterday. That's where we observe over a long period of time, a whole big group of people and we um, determine, wow, what is it that made these people so healthy? Um, I'm making this very simplistic because I don't wanna get too much into the weeds here. Then there's pr prospective cohort and this is where two groups of, of uh, a cohort is taken and then two they looked at the different uh, one uh, group is doing this or eating this way and the other group in this same cohort is is eating and doing a lifestyle um, differences in this cohort and then we're looking and this is really important with all of these we're looking at the outcome what is the outcome as scientists and researchers we want to look is what is the outcome we're looking for and is there enough clinical proof, clinical evidence based on human trials, not animal trials. Then there's randomized control study. And then the absolute gold standard is a meta-analysis of all randomized control uh, trials. And as a researcher, this is what I look for, because we want to look at all the evidence in a court of law. You're not just going, oh, we're just looking at this one piece of evidence over here, even if it's a good piece of evidence. We want to look at absolutely everything, and then we make a determination. Is that going to get the outcome that we want? And, and in your case, and most women that I work with, we want the clinicals, we want the meta-analysis for the outcome that we want, which is reducing visceral fat and lowering your risk of disease, okay, to keep it really simple. Now, uh, let's turn to the clinicals, right? In three of the largest ongoing cohort studies, comparing a plant-based diet to a healthy omnivorous diet. So let me be clear, we're not comparing a plant-based diet to a standard American unhealthy ultra-processed food diet, a healthy omnivorous diet. Those eating 100% plant-based, which you don't need to, but I'm just putting this out there because you need to know the facts, have the lowest rates of abdominal adiposity and obesity of all that dietary patterns to date over a very long period of time. Lower levels of lipids in muscle, intracellular lipids, which is one of the main causes of insulin resistance, and lowest levels of LDL and bad cholesterol. Here are some quick studies that I just wanted to pepper in here. Uh, you might have seen the twin study. It was the twin experiment. It was on um, You Are What You Eat. It was on Netflix. Brilliant uh, Stanford professor who I've worked with who did... Um, this study where he took identical twins, 22 identical twins. It was interesting to me because it's taking genetics out of the picture because I get a lot of women going, oh, but genetically we have diabetes in my family or genetically we have high cholesterol, right? And basically, you know, that's the, that you've heard it before probably, but that's the gun loaded, right? But you don't have to pull the trigger. So lifestyle could completely change your outcome regardless of genetics as it, as it did in this study. And key findings are basically, and again, this was comparing a healthy, very healthy omniv uh, um, omnivorous diet with, they call it vegan, you know, I would have done it even better than they did it, but just saying. And again, we see uh, significantly improved LDL cholesterol, uh, fasting insulin level, weight loss compared with those consuming healthy omnivorous. Then we've got Hannah Kaliova, who does these brilliant, she gets awards for the studies that she does. This is an interesting one because she compared basically a Mediterranean, those on a Mediterranean diet, which is a step in the right direction, right? Lots of fruits and veggies and chicken and fish and olive oil and blah, 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 with a low fat whole food plant based diet. And the results uh, were stunning because a lot of people, you know, 
of scatter carbs. I don't know if you are, but uh, here we go. Let's just see um, plant-based high carb, low fat diet associated with reduced body weight, reduced fat mass, insulin resistance in overweight individuals, increased consumption of total carbs was associated with decrease in BMI, volume of visceral fat, even after adjustment for energy intake. Another one here, very, very similar about how um, this dietary pattern increases and boosts metabolism, which is very important, obviously, for women over 50. This final one is a meta-analysis about um, inflammation, one of the root causes. Uh, this provides evidence, uh, da, 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 plant-based dietary patterns associated with lower levels of oxidative stress and inflammation, and, uh, which uh, may provide valid means for chronic disease prevention, okay? So those are some of the clinicals. Now let's go, this is observational, right? One of those uh, tri trials that are one of the arms, uh, levels of science, the blue zones. Um, interestingly, they're not blue zones anymore because the, uh, the standard American diet sadly has crept into almost every single one of these regions, but way back, um, they were studied to have each of these five regions. There is now a sixth, which is in Singapore. It's called the sixth blue zone. Um, healthiest, longest living. And it's really, I think it's important to make the distinction that it's, we want healthy years, not long years. There's so much obsession with longevity, longevity supplements and serums and courses and everything else. But I don't know about you, but I only want to live a long time if I have really healthy, vibrant years where I'm not in a nursing home, right? So I think we can all agree on that. So the mainstay of the blue zone plates were complex carbs, legumes, fruit, nuts, whole intact grains. Very interesting that these are the very foods that you hear some talking about on the internet and all the viral and the stories I'm going to call them um, oh you can't eat these because they contain things that are going to cause inflammation and lectins and everything and it's absolute nonsense um, all right so let's talk about better in nonsense in the in in the sense of show me the clinicals okay show me the evidence okay so let's talk about belly fat in menopause and beyond so reasons why women over 50 have a hard time with it. Number one, there's an estrogen decline, okay? And when your estrogen declines and it starts in perimenopause, and then it, there's a precipitous drop in when you do the transition into early menopause, the average age is 51 for that. Some of you, it might be, it might have been much earlier. Um, some of you a little bit later. And, um, and then it's going to just be a steady, very, very, very low, unless you do hormone replacement therapy. I'll talk a little bit about hormone replacement therapy tomorrow. I don't want to get into the weeds of it today. It can be useful. It is not a magic jelly bean. Um, so uh, estrogen decline changes where you store fat. So have you found that you're storing fat more in your midsection, ladies? Like kind of almost like under your bra line to just above your hips. Are you seeing that that midsection is sort of expanding. And that would be why. Um, chronic stress and lack of sleep, you know, uh, co uh, cause excessive cortisol release. And, and there's a really big connection between cortisol and belly fat. And I'll be talking more about that tomorrow and gut microbiome changes. So how you store fat? How do we store fat? So first off, there's subcutaneous fat, which is under the skin fat, right? This is the benign and healthy fat. Because what we're talking about here, ladies, we're not talking about, I've got to lose weight. We don't want to lose scale weight necessarily as we get older, because a lot of diets, very much the keto, low carb, uh, high protein diets, you're actually losing lean muscle mass and water on those diets. You actually really don't want to be losing that. We, we, we lose um, a, a very high percentage when we go into a menopause of, of bone and muscle mass, which, which is weight. But what we want to lose is fat, right? So there is a healthier fat, which, and we're all different shapes and sizes, right? This is not about being skinny. This is about, you know, loving your beautiful curves and shapes and sizes, but dealing with the fat that is not doesn't belong it is is not healthy for you to have on your body so there's a subcutaneous then there's visceral right which is you know you'll get there's going to be belly fat and on that slide that i showed you about biomarkers there was a little um one of the biomarkers was measuring your waist hip ratio and i am going to put a video in the facebook group 
I, um, uh, of how to do that. Because I really, it's important that you do that and then look at those biomarkers and see where it needs to be. Because that's a more important marker of visceral fat, obviously, than BMI, right? And then there's ectopic fat, right? Which is stored in your liver and in your pancreas. Okay, so this is very important to understand how you store fat. Now, I want you to understand this concept. Everyone has a personal fat threshold. Okay, so when you consume calorically dense foods, which are most of the foods in our environment now, or a surplus of calories, you're more likely to reach your personal fat threshold. And this can just happen, it doesn't happen overnight. As you go into peri and early menopause, it can just slowly, if, have, have any of you noticed just a little bit of a weight creep, little bit over the years, right? So it can just start mounting up, right? Where you're beginning to meet your personal fat threshold, okay? And then women over 50 are more, 40% are more likely to then store it because when you've met that threshold, now it's gonna be stored differently and it will be stored as visceral fat, belly fat, mostly in women over 50. And then the next stage is, if it continues, then it's going to get into your liver, your pancreas, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The liver is the most misunderstood organ in the body, but it's super important because when you get fat in your liver, and many of you will right now without even knowing it, then that's what really leads to insulin resistance and all, many of the other issues. All right, so... Visceral fat in perimenopause and menopause, excuse me, um, may lead to the five root cause symptoms and le left unchecked may cause disease, right? The earlier you nip this in the bud, the better. So, you know, if you find yourself saying, oh, I've just gained, you know, it's only five pounds, particularly if you're in perimenopause, right? Or it's just 10 pounds, it's not that bad or whatever. Well, I would invite you to pause for a moment and go, well, wait a minute, you know, you need to pay attention to that because that five pounds can very easily turn into 10 pounds. That 10 pounds can very easily turn into 20 and so on until suddenly you're looking at, you know, 60, 70, 80 pounds. And then it becomes a lot more difficult. It's possible that my clients absolutely release that weight, um, you know, even if they've got to that point. But the earlier, the better. We're talking about lowering your risk, ladies. We're talking about lowering your risk of breast cancer and several other cancers, heart disease, type two diabetes, and dementia. You know, one of the biggest risk factors for menopausal symptoms and, and extreme, you know, really, um, what am I gonna say? Sort of uh, menopausal symptoms that really interrupt your lifestyle, lack of sleep, hot flashes, um, uh, uh, many of those symptoms. And the big, one of the biggest risk factors for uh, breast cancer is being overweight or obese. So it's it's that we're not talking about, as I said yesterday, oh, I want to be running down a beach in a you know in a skin, bikini body. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about your health, your health for the next 10, 20, 30 years. So how to banish belly fat without drugs. So we want to minimize or eliminate saturated fat, which is mainly sourced from meat, dairy, coconut, and palm oil. These are the main sources of saturated fat. And when I say meat, I'm talking about all meat, not just red meat. I'm talking about there's uh, there's almost as much saturated fat in, in chicken now as there is in, in uh, red meat and, and fish and, and, and fish like farm, fish like salmon, et cetera. So we want to minimize that. Eliminate chemicals in your food. Now, I'm not talking about chemical additives like food dyes and things like that. That's, of course, we want to, you know, get rid of those. But I'm talking about things that aren't foods, right, which is excessive sodium, added sugar, all sweeteners and refined oils. These are chemicals you don't want in your in your diet. Eat soluble and insoluble fiber, fiber, this is my favorite, to produce short chain fatty acids in your gut, which lowers inflammation heals leaky gut and regulates your satiety signals. Ladies, this is nature's Zempic. Um, All right, flood your body with natural anti-obesity compounds, right? Which is flavonoids, polyphenols, anthocyanins, plant sterols, stanols, and plant enzymes. Really, it's, 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 it's pretty magical when you get this dialed in. You wanna avoid the four white poisons, saturated fats, refined starch, write this down, 
added and refined sugar and salt. That's really easy to remember, isn't it? The four white poisons. None of these are going to do you any good. Your health or your or, or going to help you get rid of uh, visceral fat. Menno belly, bloating, and the estra bloom, and the F word. So you might have heard of the term menno belly, and I don't know if any of you have started to experience a little bit more bloating and gas and digestive issues since you've sort of gone into peri and menopause and late menopause as well. Now, this is because low estrogen can cause the less friendly bacteria in your gut to bloom. It's literally a bloom. Okay, And this is a really big issue because your gut is the foundation of your health and is a very important component in releasing fat. Fiber is vital for creating gut health, lowering disease risk and banishing belly fat. So what does it do? This soluble and insoluble fiber. I'm not talking about throwing some supplements down the hatch, fiber supplements. I'm talking about filling your diet with soluble and insoluble fiber. So it flushes excess estrogen and carcinogens out of your system. It feeds your trillion microbes, you're eating for two. You're eating for that, the, all those microbes in there. Heals leaky gut, short chain fatty acids, and triggers, this is very important again, the release of GLP-1, right? Which uh, Azempic is an agonist. It mimics GLP-1, but you can release it naturally. So your menopause and beyond menopause nutrition blueprint so a primarily whole food plant-based diet, and it doesn't have to be 100%, but a, um, a primarily whole food plant-based diet that's minimally processed, low in saturated fat, low in oils, low in sodium, no added sugars or artificial sweeteners, even stevia or monk fruit, no soda, and minimal alcohol, okay? Now, whole food plant-based diet that is rich in anti-inflammatory protein, healthy fats, body satiating complex carbs, and nutrient dense. Because when you're eating this way, you will feel satiated. It's mood food. You feel happy. You're never going to go hungry. And you'll find that, you know, the opposite of a Zempic face, you're going to, your skin's going to get better. You're going to get a glow and a bloom. So many clients uh, tell me that they walk into a room and everybody goes, what, what's your secret? Because they're literally glowing because of all these nutrient dense foods that they're flooding their diet with. So what are you replacing the meat and the dairy and the processed foods with? Well, unlimited fruits and vegetables, beans and legumes, whole intact grains, healthy whole fats and herbs and spices. Now, this is obviously the generalized list here. And within each of these categories, there's so much nuance and so many questions. And we can go really, really deep. I could literally do a two-hour presentation on each of these, but I'm just giving you the broad strokes here. Supplementation. So you will need some supplementation, particularly if you're over the age of 50. I do not sell supplements myself. The supplement industry is completely unregulated. So it's really, really important to understand that with massive marketing, obviously, behind it. Um, it is important that you get it dialed in and personalized for you. So I really do recommend that you work with somebody to do that, somebody who can look at your blood work, look at your level, your serum levels. But I will say that almost everybody is going to need B12, EPA, DHA supplement, a little bit of calcium. It's a Goldilocks dose. You do not want too much. Vitamin D, same. It's a Goldilocks dose. A lot of people think they just whack 5,000 to 10,000 IUs of vitamin D. Um, in not a good idea. It's now been proving, proven that that can be deleterious and can lead to fractures later in life. So you've got to be very careful with supplements and iodine to support your thyroid. A lot of women I work with have autoimmune disease or they have low thyroid or they have Hashimoto's and we really need to eat in a way and possibly supplement to support the thyroid. Uh, do I need to go all in to get results? Well, it depends, right? So it depends on your baseline gut health because Sometimes if your gut health is if, you, is, if you have gut dysbiosis, because you've maybe eaten not so well for the last few years, maybe you've been a yo-yo dieter, that'll, that'll not be great for your microbiome. Maybe you've taken um, antibiotics. Um, and the difficulty is that in menopause, you are going to be more prone, a lot of women are more prone to UTIs, 
and bacterial infections. And it's a sort of vicious circle because then you have to take multiple courses of antibiotics. And obviously that's going to lead to gut dysbiosis. So we have to start with kind of looking at where you are, where your gut health is, because you may want to go all in and go a little bit more slowly so we don't overwhelm your gut. It also depends on your health circumstances. So there's, you know, where are you? What's your health? What are you struggling with right now? And very much so. The big question is, what's the outcome you want and how quickly do you want it? So those are questions that you would really sort of need to ask yourself. So you want to ask, do I want easy and convenient, right? And some women do. So you might be like, you know, I'm in really good health now, don't have any, you know, fat to release and whatever. Just, you know, I don't want to make too many changes. I'm just content with a few baby steps over time. And there's no right or wrong with this, by the way. It's just you. It's what you want. Um, that, so, and then number two is better. So I want to do quite a lot better. I want to make some changes and um, be content with slow and steady improvement in some areas of my life. And then number three is the best. I, I, I've got an outcome that I want. And so to the best of my ability, I kind of really want to be all in with all lifestyle changes and experience um, significant results in, in 90 days. And the one thing I will say with number three, and I've said this on other workshops that I've done before, is that moderation, if you've got an outcome that you want to reach, like re releasing a significant amount of, of fat or belly fat or bringing markers down or whatever, if your outcome is significant re results, then it really what you're going to need to do is make significant uh, changes. But the main reason why is that if you do moderation, it's unlikely you're going to see those significant results and therefore you're going to be d discouraged. And so when you just go for it, you're going to have these amazing results and then that's going to be very exciting for you. And if you do it in a way that certainly is the way that I lay down, it's it doesn't feel difficult to do. It's fun. It's satiating. Um, it's it it just it's feel good. Um, so so you know that's that's really I would say you know you can get very discouraged. You know you hear everybody going, oh the healthy thing is everything in moderation. Well really, where did that get you right? And you just got to be kind of honest about that. But ultimately, it's not a one size fits all. OK, so that's why everybody is different. And that's why it's really important to sort of understand where you are and the outcome that you want. Ultimately, you're investing in your health for the next 20 to 30 years of your life. That is what you're doing. And that's what I really want you to think about, because yesterday we talked about your future dream self right, your future self. And I had you all imagine yourself 20 years from now. I'm 60 now. So I was imagining my 80 year old self, right? 20 years, right? The next 20 years of my life. And it's like what I do today, and certainly what I have my clients to do, we call it we're making deposits into our future dream self wellness bank account. Every single thing you do, Everything, every decision you make, every food you eat, every drink you have, every sip of alcohol, everything you do is either moving you to the woman you want to be or away from the woman that you want to be. That's it. So I want you to start seeing this is not this thing that I've got to do and lifestyle habits that I've got. No, you're investing in the woman who you want to be. Because if you're not investing in her now, she's depending on you. If you put yourself in the shoes of the eight-year-old version of you, take a breath, close your eyes, imagine she's, what is she saying to you? Please take care of yourself, please. Well, she might even be saying, I'm so glad that you did because here we are right now, stronger than ever, right? All right, so here are some food swaps and you can, we, we will put these food swaps so you can take a, 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 a screenshot of it because I'm going to go over them really, really quickly. Um, Better to best. So better are the ones that are bolded and better are better than a standard American diet. So for instance, are eggs better than Pop-Tarts? Well, absolutely, yes. But what could be best for you to get the outcome you want? Lower inflammation, belly fat off, low cholesterol, blah, blah, blah. Fully loaded smoothie. Chicken. Is chicken better than um, hot dogs and processed um, meats and bacon? Yeah, it's much better, right? 
However, there are some issues with chicken, right? As 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 noted in the, one, the two of the clinical trials that I sh showed you. In fact, it's interesting that poultry has been as, is one of the foods that's been associated with one of the main reasons why people gain fat. Interestingly, and all you're told is to just you know eat chicken breast. So better choice there. Very similar story with salmon. You know whole wheat bread, obviously better than white you know bread. You know, you could go for Ezekiel, sourdough in moderation, seed oils. It's best to avoid oils um, due to caloric density. Not so much. Um, there's there's very little clinical evidence to show that seed oils create inflammation. I've actually just done a YouTube video about this. But in terms of they're just calorically very, very dense. All oils are olive oil. Same, you know, eat olives. You can eat sort of 24 olives for the amount of oil that you would get in a tiny little, you know, what you would sprinkle on your salad. Um, avocado oil, because people think a lot of these things are oh, avocado oil and olive oil. Well, eat the whole food instead, not butters, not great. If you're on a weight loss journey, eat raw whole nuts instead. Maple syrup, honey, any sweetener, any sweetener spikes your blood sugar. Is it better than crappy, you know, uh, refined sugar that you would just you know dump on food? Of course it is uh, to have maple syrup or, or honey, but you're better off with dates and date syrup and coconut oil. I'm, I'm picking things that I hear people going, oh, they're healthy. It's saturated, pure saturated fat, so you don't need it. Um, here's how to read a nutrition label. I'm looking at the time here. So a nutrition label, this is homework that you can do. Again, if you can, just take a screenshot of this. So you want to learn how to read a nutrition label. And what I teach my clients to do is we're not counting calories. Forget the calories right? Because a calorie isn't a calorie. So we don't worry about calories and we certainly don't count calories. Phew, what a relief, right? But what I do want you to really pay attention to on a label is the percent daily value. And it's a labeling system if you're in Europe is different. So I'm just going to, if you're watching from a different country, this, this is different. And, you know, with the clients that I work with, I give them a whole different way of showing them how to read a, an ingredient label if they're, you know, in Europe. Um, but certainly here in North America, you want to look at the daily value and just know that if it's 5% or less then the new, they call it the nutrient, but you know, it's not really a nutrient, but the nutrient is considered to be low. And if it's 20% daily value or higher, it's high. Okay. So you can see on this label here, the saturated fat is 5%, which is okay is okay, better to be 0%, but it's 5%. So what you wanna do is you wanna look for sodium 6% or less daily value. You can quickly write this down or take a screenshot, sat, sat fat, 3% daily value or below and zero added sugars. And the other thing that we might be looking at a little bit is um, protein. You might go, but Sophie, I've heard all this and the plant-based thing, but what about carbs, anti-nutrients, lectins, oxalates, phytates? How am I going to get enough protein? Soy, I thought that leads to breast cancer. These are really good and important questions. And if you have questions about any of those, I will get to them at the end of the presentation. Uh, your diet ultimately needs to be well-planned and it needs to be customized for you and your needs. It really does. And this is where, ladies, it's really important to understand that customization is, is, is key and personalization. And I would recommend that if you, you know, if you're really serious about making some changes, that you do have somebody who can really help you personalize and customize for you. And the main reason why is because if it's not personalized and customized for you, then it's going, it can be like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole which is again the problem why so many diets don't work, right? You're just trying to force something that doesn't work for your lifestyle. And we need to take everything into account, not just your health history, not just the outcome you want, but what's your situation? Do you have supportive people around you? Do you have a supportive partner or somebody who would never be on the same um, page as you? Um, or do you live alone? Um, what are your stress levels like? What is your day like? What is your working day like? Do you travel all the time? You know, do you like cooking? Do you hate cooking? What is your skill? We have to take all of that into account or you need to and then find a way to make it a lifestyle incorporating these principles that's really going to work for you and that's why it's so so important that it's customized so ladies ultimately 
you know, if you're watching this and you're like, Sophie, I'm, thank you. I'm good with just a little easy and convenient. I want it to be. And I'm kind of almost where I am right now. Or if you want to make better, you know, I just want to make better, but you know, I'm very content with just some slow little, you know, gentle improvements, then go and do it. Go then go and take the principles that I've laid down again. You can watch the replay of this and go, and, you know, start, re start by reading some of those labels and you can find there's no shortage of plenty of free information on the internet, right? Mm. Plant-based meal plans, you name it. But here's the thing, information is not transformation. And write that down, information is not transformation. So we can very easily fall into the trap of which is information gathering because we it floods into our inbox, right? And it's on our social media feed, the net, the new podcast, the new episode, the new YouTube video, the new whatever it is. And we keep gathering, gathering, gathering all this information. It's busy work, right? But it doesn't lead to transformation. And we have to really be really clear and honest with that. Or has it? It might have for some of you, but for most of you, it truly um, hasn't. So if you are somebody who is struggling right now and you're in a place right now where you're like, Sophie, I feel so discouraged and so despondent because I am somebody who has tried everything. I speak to women who've got shelves of diet books and self-help books and diets and programs sitting on their desktop and all of this. And if you're there and you're like, I feel so embarrassed and ashamed and such a failure because I've tried so many things that haven't worked. And I'm honestly beginning to lose hope that, that anything really could work for me. And you're worried because you have got that belly fat. Your numbers, biomarkers are creeping up. You are looking at yourself in the mirror every day and not liking your reflection. You are seeing your, yourself in photographs and going, oh my gosh, is that me? Maybe, you know, with the holidays coming up, you're dreading it because you're like, I don't want to be in a group photo or I don't want to have to facing family and friends because I don't like the way I look. Maybe you're suffering with not liking the way you feel. You're waking up getting out of bed every morning with kind of aches and pains going, where did that come from? You know, and you're worried. Is this, is this inflammation? What's going on here? You know, and you're looking ahead and you're thinking, well, we're coming up soon to another new year, right? New year's resolutions. And you're like every year I've made new year's resolutions every year. And let me know in the chat, if this is you, just be honest. We can all be honest, safe place to be honest. But every year it's like, this is the year that I'm going to give up dairy and sugar and gluten and exercise every single day and get my gym membership. And then life happens. And then three months into the year, your good habits have fallen by the wayside. You've come off that diet that you swore pledge to yourself and others that you would do. Life's got in the way. Temptations have got in the way. You've been knocked sideways. You haven't been able to stick to it and you feel horrible. And each year that happens. Each year that happens. You can gain another two pounds, another four, another six, just can slowly creep up until you get to a place where, and I don't know if that's you, that you're just like, you know, seriously, secretly, deep down inside, you know, is this what I've got to settle with? So if that's you, then you may need best. <laughs> you may need all in, right? And I want you to imagine for a moment. So we talked yesterday about imagining the outcome. So I want you to take a breath for a moment. Close your eyes if you want to. And I want you to imagine getting to the 1st of January, 2025, and feeling so good and excited in your body. I want you to imagine what would it feel like to wake up in the morning and not have those aches and pains, to have energy, to be excited about the day, to know exactly what you're doing, your, your holistic um, blueprint, your holistic steps that you get to take today. And you're so excited because you feel so good. You've got tons of energy. The weight, it, the fat is melting off your body. By the 1st of January, you've already released, you've got a head start, you've already released at least 10 pounds of that fat. You're like, yes. And it feels good. It's a lifestyle. You are excited. This is a change that you're like, I am loving this. And this is something that I want to do, that I can do, that works for me. I am no longer hungry. I don't have those mood swings. I no longer have those cravings. 
I feel amazing. And I want you to imagine that you're so excited that you're excited about the new wardrobe that you're going to be able to buy and that you're going to be able to, in the spring, start buying those clothes that maybe you haven't been able to wear for years, the cute little sleeveless tops, the jeans that you can tuck your shirt in, the little sundress, even getting yourself into a into a beautiful one piece. And if it's a one piece, ladies, what color is the one piece, you know, without all the cover ups and, and the moo-moos, because you're just feeling great about your body. If that's what you want, then it is possible for you. It's a hundred percent possible. And if that's what you want, then going kind of all in and saying, Sophie, I, I, I'm going to go best on this. That's what's going to be necessary. And you know, I want to talk to you very quickly about an opportunity that I have for you this year. And I'm going to talk to you quickly about this before I get to the questions, because I have so few spots left for this opportunity for this year. So if that is what you want, and listen carefully, ladies, then the opportunity that I have for you is to come and ignite your life, basically ignite your body, and ignite your life. What is ignite your life? What am I talking about here? Well, it is basically a four month accelerated wellness program with a mind blowing 14 week curriculum that you have for life. But what makes ignite your life so radically different from anything out there is the level of personalization and customization because I believe that is what is necessary. As I just said, from the minute you come in, we take you by the hand, you are working with me personally. As soon as you come in and go yes to claiming the outcome you want, you're gonna be on a newbie call with me. And on that call, we're gonna go through all your supplements, your blood work, if you've had it done recently, everything. And we're gonna start personalizing and customizing your plan. So you feel happy, certain, confident, and excited. But that's just the beginning. What we do, and when I say we, I'm talking about myself, Coach Mary and Coach Audra, who some of you have seen on past workshops. They are world-class coaches. And Coach Mary is also a nutritionist. The three of us take your hand and we walk you through your curriculum step by step, day by day, week by week, month by month until you get the outcome you want. We do not let your hand go until you get the outcome you want. It is a holistic program. It is not just nutrition. It covers every single aspect. Many of the other things I'm going to be going into to tomorrow, but it is holistic. It's all the pieces of the puzzle. It is your exercise. We meet you where you are and dial in the exercise that you need to do for you. It is your sleep. It is your circadian rhythms. It is very, very much so dealing with, you know, your stress, your mindset, developing a, a bulletproof mindset. So it's a very comprehensive and very deep. That's why it is a life changing program. And, you know, every single week that you're on with me live, every single week live with me two times a week, once with Coach Mary, dialing in your nutrition, there's one-on-one -on -one calls, et cetera. Um, at the end, and this is very important, so at the end of four months, you then go, why I say this is a, a program for life, you go into an alumni group, and in that alumni group with all your friends, because the group is very, very important that you're going to be with, you have life coaching with me once a month and a cooking class forever, forever at no additional uh, cost. So that is the program. Um, and Catherine will put the fact sheet into the, into the chat right now. Um, all the details are on that fact sheet, but this is really important, okay? I have very few spots available. This is actually the best time of year to join because you get extra time because of the holidays. So it's a great advantage for you to join, but I'm only taking on a few clients right into my program right now. Now, I have a special VIP pod and the VIP pod, right, is I have eight spots available in that VIP pod. And that's where you get six extra semi private coaching sessions with me. Now, uh, let's talk about the investment. So the investment, if uh, the good news is that it's less than what it would cost you to be six months on a Zenpic, right? And of course, you know that, you know, after you finish your subscription, we now know that the weight comes back on again, right? So the good news is that 
it's less than that. And this is how simple and affordable we've made the investment. So the regular investment for the program to get your incredible outcome, but a program for life to maintain that as my clients do years and years down the line, the regular investment is only 6,000, 6K. But for those of you who have registered for this workshop, if you are registered, and obviously you are because you're here now, if you're watching the replay, I am taking $1,000 off the cost of that. And this is only until the end of the day on Tuesday. And those spots will go very quickly. And that brings the entire lifetime investment down to only 5K. There is a split pay option available as well. It is all on the fact sheet. Now, if you want to be in the VIP pod, which I highly recommend you do anything you can to get in that pod, just jump on it. You want to jump on it as soon as possible because that will fill up and those spots will go like that. Here's the other thing. What I recommend you do, and the most important thing, is if you're like Sophie, I just don't know if this is going to be a good fit for me. I'm not sure. I've got questions. Here's my outcome. Here's my health situation. Here's my circumstances. Then book a discovery call with me, a short discovery call. And you can do that right this second. Catherine is putting a link in the chat right now that you can book your discovery call. There is one of me. It is coming into the holiday season. I am as busy as you are. So race to book your discovery call. It's no harm in doing that. I'm not going to bite. It's a great opportunity for you and I to spend 20 minutes figuring out if this is a good fit for you or not. And if it's not, then something we, I can point you in a different direction. OK, but that's what I want you to do. If in doubt, jump on and grab one of those calls, because, again, I have opened up my calendar as much as I can over the next few days. But now is the time that you really, really want to, you know, either just enroll and go, look, I deserve it. I'm having it. I'm finally going to get the help that I always need. I've seen some of you have seen hundreds of my testimonials and case studies and met some of my amazing clients. And you're like, you're like, yep, I want what she's got. I'm having it. Then just just get yourself registered and let's get you started. You will be on your newbie call with me as early as where are we now? Wednesday, as early as the end of this week or this weekend. That's how quick it's going to be. As soon as you enroll, the first step that you're going to do is you're going to book your newbie call with me. All right, so let me have a quick look here because I'm going to take some questions right now. So, uh, Catherine, if you can send me some questions, because I want to answer your questions, ladies, uh, particularly about nutrition. And, um, and you can ask me any questions, actually, about anything. And this, uh, da, 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 da. Um, tomorrow we have got, we're really digging into these other pieces of the puzzle and strategy pieces of the puzzle that are equally as important as nutrition. So absolutely make sure that you show up tomorrow. Also, I've got a lovely client, Rachel, who you're going to want to meet, and she's she's going to pop on, and she's actually just uh, just finished her her four months, and she is uh, you, you're just going to you're probably going to want to have a chat with her. So let me just see. Uh, here we go. I've got some questions, so let's get into these. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Some say plant protein. Oh, this is such a great question. Some say plant protein is not as complete or bioavailable as animal protein to build muscle uh, in midlife. You, um, well, no, it, it, it's, it's not true. It is just as bioavailable protein. Plant-based protein contains all of the available amino acids that you need. The good news is with plant-based protein, you're getting your protein source in a way that you're not getting it along with the saturated fats, the cholesterol, and, and everything else. Um, so um, you are going to get plenty of protein. So the women that I work with, we are very invested. A very big part of your wellness accelerated program with me is building lean muscle mass. So we have a big focus on that because it's so important as we get older. 
And so we have to make sure that we're getting enough protein. And this is, is such a good question because this is where the customization piece comes in. And also where a, a lot of women could get it wrong because they're trying to do some kind of plant-based diet. And by the way, it doesn't need, it's not vegan. I'm going to be really clear about this. Some of those studies are using the vegan word. I don't, I am not vegan. I'm not a classic vegan. So it's not that. It is a whole food, primarily plant-based. Some of my clients have some fish. Okay, so we're going to work with you to make it easy for you. So it's not too difficult. And so, so you can continue sort of your lifestyle as normal. So there might be a place to have a little bit of fish in there. But primarily, I want to teach you the skills to understand how much protein you need, where to get it from, the best sources, and to have really varied sources, because there are different amino acids in different plant um based uh, uh, proteins. And we need to make sure, for instance, that you're getting enough leucine and things like that. But um, but yes, you're gonna get plenty. And yes, it's bioavailable. Um, um, and, and, and again, possibly not as bioavailable as meat sources, but you've got to weigh up, do you know what I mean? The pros and cons, if your outcome is to release fat and belly fat, and we reach that beautiful, beautiful, happy medium place. Next question, how quickly can you adequately hydrate when experiencing hot flashes? Um, you just need to hydrate. I think people get really caught up on the hydration question and it's like, oh, you know, you want to, you know, six cups of water a day. Um, you know, I'm very much into um, drinking. You want to drink, especially you want to drink water before you eat. It's called front loading and it will also help fire up digestive enzymes, which diminish, can diminish as you get older, do diminish. Um, so there's a lot of reasons. Um, electrolytes um, are important um, because what, what I am showing and in great detail, and again, it's sort of not a one size fits all because some clients, when we do your newbie call, I, I need to know, you know, what is your blood pressure? Do you have high blood pressure, normal blood pressure or very low blood pressure? And that's going to determine salt intake and the kind of salt that I'm going to ha have you eat. But if somebody, for instance, and again, this is it. There's so many of these questions are it depends. It depends on you and your circumstances. Are you exercising a lot? Are you sweating? Are you outside? How much salt are you getting in your diet, you know, every single day? Um, but if you are very low sodium and low salt, then you are going to need electrolytes. Absolutely, you're going to need electrolytes. Part of my program is there's a little bit of a fasting component um, later on in the program. And that's when we re really want to make sure we're getting enough electrolytes. Um, okay, I get my bloods taken to monitor. We've got five more minutes, ladies. Uh, but, but what additional testing? Um, oh, this is a really great question. So I would just... This question is a lady who gets her blood done regularly to monitor other blood issues. And certainly what I'm interested in looking at, at with my nutritionist hat on, obviously I'm not gonna read all of your entire blood work, but I'm reading the portion of your blood work that pertains to what nutrition, to nutritional therapy, basically, to what can imp dramatically improve those markers. So what I'm interested in is looking at your blood lipids. I'm interested in looking at your sugars, your A1C and things like vitamin D, maybe even B12. But what I would say is the additional tests to ask for, because not everybody will give you that test, is um, APOB, write it down, APO, maybe Wendy, you can pop it in the chat, A-P-O slash B, okay, APO lipoprotein B, because now, and, and even, you know, many doctors, even my doctor, who's a great doctor, did, doesn't even, as soon, my prediction is that in two to five years time, it'll be standard, because it's a much better marker to determine your risk of cardiovascular disease than any of the current LDL, non-VLDL, and all those other, not HDL, excuse me, tests. Um, what type of doctor do I work to understand and optimize biomarkers? Um, you know, you, you want to work with a doctor who really listens to you, okay, and doesn't just push it off and go, oh, well, you know, just here's a medication. I would say you want to work with a doctor who's open to and very interested in a lifestyle intervention. You know, one of my, uh, not one of, all of my clients, I would say almost all of them, their doctor says to them, whatever you're doing, keep on doing it. 
That's what they all say. So if you have a doctor who's open to that, and some of my clients have started working with a doctor who's like, yeah, well, I don't know whether that's going to help. And then they literally have to eat their words when they go see them four months later. Eat their words because it's there. It's on labs. It's on paper. Uh, so you want to work <clears throat> with somebody who's open. I will say, um, and the average weight release, by the way, somebody asked me this question, the average weight release in, um, in four months is 20 to 30 pounds with me. And that's not going on an extreme diet. It's not counting calories. It's eating plenty of carbs, 20 to 30 pounds. And if you have more to lose than that, it's just going to get easier and easier. You're just going to continue because you're doing a lifestyle, not a diet. Um, uh, yeah, stevia. I mean, look, stevia is better than some of the other sugars. And it's certainly the artificial sweeteners. But there's a reason why I don't include it, because what I'm teaching my clients to do is to neuro adapt their taste buds. And this is such an important part of my methodology. And if you're eating something that is 600 times sweeter than sugar, you're not going to neuro, neuro adapt. Uh, how many grams of protein recommend? It depends how many grams um, over 50. It depends on your lifestyle. It, de it de There's a lot of it depends, but I'm going to say ballpark between 70 to 90 grams a day. But again, it really, there's a lot of variables that come into that. Um, additional recommendation, if you don't have a thyroid, um, you just want to make sure that your nutrition is absolutely A1. You want best nutrition, best gold standard nutritional protocol. If you have Hashimoto's, low thyroid or no thyroid, then you really want to be stepping up and going, I'm, I'm going all in because that does obviously affect things when you have no thyroids. And, and I have worked with women who have no thyroid or partially uh, they've had their thyroid partially removed or they have Hashimoto's or whatnot. So in fact, I would say a very, very large percentage of women that I work with have are on thyroid meds or have uh, low thyroid. It's sort of epidemic. Any thoughts on Viome, uh, Viome tests and supplements? I'm not sure so much about that. Uh, you know, oh, I think you're talking about microbiome tests. I don't think they're at a place right now where they're going to be accurate enough for, to be very helpful for you. Um, so I would say, and, and this is interesting for so many different testings that we do, like, you know, you may go to a functional doctor and have all a myriad of tests done, whether it's DNA testing, saliva testing, Dutch testing, microbiome testing, you name it, they're testing absolutely everything. And, you know, there's some of the, that, you know, again, we're really looking at the clinicals of whether these, you know, are very helpful. So many women that I work with have been to see functional doctors and come away with hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of supplements because, you know, you come away with two or $300 worth of supplements first visit. Well, you need follow-up visits and they're going to require more testing and you're going to keep on having to take those supplements over and over. So what I recommend is I give you the most inexpensive and the least amount of supplements you possibly need to take. Because for me, it's food first and then just let's plug the gaps. So we want to be very careful with that. Allergy testing is another one. DNA testing, you come away with a list as long as your arm or a CVS receipt of things that you can't or shouldn't eat or whatever. And very often it's not very accurate. Not only that, but when you repair your gut health and you repair your overall health, you're probably going to be able to eat the majority of those foods anyway. All right. So that's it. Uh, that's all that we have time for today, ladies. Come back tomorrow because we're going to get into those other pieces of the puzzle, the cortisol, the exercise, the sleep, the lifestyle, managing chronic stress. Those are very, very important. We don't, we can't just, it's that one thing we don't do. And you've got a head start now, ladies. And why I mentioned it today is I know I've had, you know, quite a lot of interest in this already. So the, um, VIP spots are going to go so, so quickly. So if that's what you're like, Sophie, I want to be in that VIP pod. I want to have extra time working with you. I want to 10x my results because I get to know all of you ladies very, very well. You are literally working with me. I am available to you six days a week. That is unheard of. Anything out there, I don't know anybody who does that maybe a rep or somebody, but I am available to you. Um, so 
you know, if you want to grab one of those spots, you know, my my recommendation is just grab it as soon as possible. But, you know, if you've got questions, which you may well have, and it's very normal to have questions and or doubts or like, I don't know, whatever, just can't harm. Just just book a um, book a discovery call with me. I'll try and fit you in. Catherine will put the link in once again in the chat. If you're watching the replay, the link is underneath the um recording. <laughs> All right, ladies, have an amazing day. I have been talking so much. I'm going to literally go and drink, hydrate with a full bottle. This is a bottle that actually I'm not going to jinx it. Forget it. I was going to say something about not losing it, but I'm not going to jinx it. All right, ladies, it's been so great to spend time. Coach Wendy, you are amazing. Thank you. Catherine, my director of operations, my, I have the best team on the planet. You will get to know all of my team very, very well if you work with me. We, we're, a, we're a tight little team and we hold you very tightly. There's a massive amount of accountability and support built in. Nobody slips through the net um, in Ignite. All right, big hugs, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.